Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're looking at the starting deck for Wilbur. Uh, now, with this, I am talking Max Madness. Uh, I've just turned off the poverty so that I can show you uh, because I didn't take any of the divinations. So that kind of makes the math work out. So with divinations, you'll be able to to craft this deck every time, or something similar or better than this every time, and this will reliably get you through the the first acts and well on your way to completing any high madness run. If you're doing any lower madness, uh, feel free to make upgrades. I'll try to suggest a couple uh, ways to upgrade the deck, but this will be a good starting point for any any deck you do on any difficulty. So with Wilbur, the we're kind of playing around the, the lightning theme. You got either lightning or books or some combination thereof with him. The uh, mirror images don't fit into any of those, so we took the mirror images out. Uh, electric Discharge, uh, it is a, it's just an expensive card, two energy or three energy, depending on how we upgrade it. And in the final form, I don't think we're even going to keep any of these in the deck. We're always going to want to look for a better lightning card. So trimming it down to two is where we're at. We're going to lower the cost of one of these, and these will be our kind of end final five cards that we're looking to do. It's going to be a, a reduced cost electric discharge, a full cost electric discharge, and all these zaps. We did upgrade these zaps to the target monster instead of the random monster give it a little more control of where we're putting the damage and where we're putting the spark debuff specifically because as you can as you know spark is uh it splashes and splashing from the edges is not as powerful as splashing from the middle so being control of where we put the spark is really nice uh the water jets were okay but they they cost one energy for not as much damage and we really just can't maintain that high cost of a deck so what we did is we actually brought in these reins. The reins are nice for two parts. Uh, in the first act against the hatch or against the tree boss, being able to apply wet to your team is really nice to put out the fires. Uh, just make sure you're not running any self-burn mages in your party. Uh, and then in the second act or third, depending on which way you go to the fire biome, if you go to the fire biome, these are, are very playable uh, in the fact that they douse your own fire. Not to mention wet, of course, increasing all of lightning damage. So these, these basic reins are actually very good for Wilbur. So I, I, we don't mind playing these at all. They also vanish out of the deck, and we're looking to vanish most of our deck down to just the final five cards. And this, this will just increase our lightning damage. Uh, a lot of the other cards... So the Shifting Scroll, uh, I'm, we cut that. Uh, if you have a problem with that, then you, you probably know of a combination that works well with it. Uh, but that combination is a little hard to pull off on Higher Madness, and if you know how to do it, then more power to you. I'll talk about it a little more when we get to the, the skills, but even even if you're planning on using the Shifting Scroll for some shenanigans, it still normally requires you to be uh, level 3 with Wilbur, which means you can just craft a Shifting Scroll later uh, to do that, you know what I mean? So we don't really want it in the deck, it's just a dead card until we get to the later times. This Twin Scrolls kind of feels the same way, but you can't recraft Twin Scrolls. So we're keeping it. Uh, honestly, if you want to get rid of it, that's fine. It's just a zero cost vanish for us right now that doesn't really do much because we don't really want to give too many cards away. Yes, Zaps are okay and Reigns are okay, like situationally, but like every other person in our in our, uh, in our our team is going to have better uses of these cards and we don't really need another copy of any of our, our low cost stuff. And maybe once we bring the Electric Discharge down to one, it'll be good to copy it. But until you get to the, the later portions of the game with Wilbur, this Twin Scrolls doesn't have as much mileage as we'd like. So, But we are keeping it because it's a very fun card. It's very powerful, but it's just not powerful yet in the early acts. Um, the Librarian, uh, just a powerful card, fun to have. Uh, it is an element of randomness, so if you dislike that, cutting it is fine. Uh, it's just because of the cost reduction is permanent. Uh, it is. It can be very powerful. It is. is it requires setup, and it's. It's not uh, an inertial burst. So, if your fights are only going one or two rounds, this really isn't helping you. Uh, but it is. It's very playable and very valuable. And the later games, depending on which way we go with Wilbur, uh, it can be very, very good. Uh, what we also brought in is this electricity manual. Uh, I would say basically all versions of Wilbur will want electricity manuals, uh, one way or another. And this is just reducing the cost of lightning spells. Uh, permanently is is the goal here it is a little bit of setup because we don't get to redraw it eventually we want the the yellow version because it costs less energy uh blue version's nice but with the way wilbur works with his twin scrolls and copying spells we actually want this this reduction to be permanent not just till discarded 
So you're going to want the basic one or the yellow one if you can upgrade it. Uh, da, da, da. Electric discharges, like I said, they're not going to be our final form for this deck. What we're really looking for are ball lightnings or the, the chain one. I can't think of the name off the top of my head and I can't craft it in the starting town here. Starting items, we got rid of all those. Shifting scrolls, so all that's left really is this prismatic field. Uh, you'll find prismatic field is is required on high difficulty to get through the hatch or past the tree boss. Not necessarily required, but highly incentivized to have it. Uh, just being able to get this insulate on our team is a big deal. Uh, later versions of Wilbur, you might consider switching it to this this non-vanished version that applies powerful, but that's very uh, that's. You're either going to cut it in the later acts and not run it anymore, or you're just going to transfer it to this powerful version, uh, depending on kind of where Wilbur's sitting with your team. Uh, yeah, that should cut it for most of the cards. Like I said, we're just trying to we're trying to trim our deck down to to everything vanish. Oh, Curse of Exhaustions. These are just really good for slowing down our enemy. Honestly, they're just here because they're a vanish card, and we want to get down to our final five. And our final five will be, of course, whatever we get from Librarian. Maybe it vanishes, maybe it doesn't two electric discharges, and three zaps. So hopefully this vanished, and we just do the triple zap, double electric discharge, and we'll be able to maintain it because one of these discharges will cost less because of the electricity manual. Uh, I could see an argument for keeping a third elect electric discharge. Wow, that's a, that's a word I can't say very well, guys. Um, just to be more consistent with the electricity manual. But eventually you'll find a, a better card here anyway, so I that's why I cut down to two. Three is perfectly fine to start with. I don't think you're going to have a complaint either way. Uh, I just like... Uh, I, I like the consistency of going down to two, of just being able to play the discharges, not necessarily... I can I can hold off on the manual, it's okay. Uh, yeah, that covers that. Let's go to skills. So with Wilbur, uh, the random energize, you can't really have any control of it. It's hard to, to build around, so... Hey, look, you just have extra energy sometimes. The first two are very playable. Uh, skillful, it's just it's basically just card draw. The powerful is nice if you're doing any sort of damage build, but if you're doing a damage build, you probably want circular overload anyway. Uh, and then the speed is just nice to get ahead of the, the team and kind of manipulate uh, buffs and, and speeds and debuffs and stuff like that. So it's really just the biggest part here is you're paying one energy to draw four cards because uh, odds are you're going to always have enough skills to, to proc this enough to use it. Circuit Overload is very hit or miss. It has a high ceiling, low floor, because you have to pair it with cards that cost energy. You don't necessarily have to pair it with electric cards or spark cards, which it definitely goes a lot better if you're casting electric spells behind this. But even just casting, you know, the, the Curse of Exhaustion and stuff behind this will still, because it's got the built-in spark application, uh, will still you'll still get plenty of value out of it. So I think Circuit Overload is a very uh, safe one to go. Uh, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with skillful. These are they're both very very playable. Uh, level three is when you have to make a really big decision for Wilbur, and you actually probably want to make this decision in the starting town before you build your deck because uh, with Scholar, these these books you're going to go along this route of you're going to reduce the cost of a card really low and then cast it multiple times, or you're going to reduce it really low and pass a copy to your teammates. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a card good for you, but just a good card good for them. Usually I'd want it to be a card that's good for you because you're going to have to cast it yourself. Uh, but if you're going the Scholar route, you might want to keep the Shifting Scroll or at least buy back a new version later. You're going to get Bookworm. That's another book that allows you to find certain cards because you're trying to set up this kind of combo where you're, you're consistently getting a powerful card into your hand, reducing its cost, and then copying it or giving it, uh, you know, giving it yourself another copy or, or that kind of thing or replaying it with electricity manuals. So this is a very combo-centric very powerful way to go, but it's not the only way you have to go. Both of these are very viable. Electric Arc just says, I want to do electric damage, and I want it to do it to bosses. Because usually Spark, you can't... You don't get any damage out of it on single targets. And once you have Elites enabled on your random, like your random encounters and Elites, there's always going to be someone that's staying alive last, and that this, this Voltaic Arc really helps Spark deal with them. Also, it's just a straight damage increase because, hey, it's hitting another person, right? So I think Voltaic Arc is always a good choice if you have any electric spells in your deck or, or if anyone on your team is doing spark applications. Just very strong, very powerful. Uh, book is very specific on what you want to do. 
uh, or just if you want to kind of go the, the encyclopedia route, this is also a really good one. You just want to do random spells and you're always casting enough books to reduce the cost of things. This is, this is a lot of fun. So both very playable, both very fun. Uh, level four, Tesla Coil. This one's a lot harder to play around than it looks. Uh, whenever you apply Energize. So you have a couple lightning spells uh, we didn't talk about was Charge Battery. That's a, a fairly good one to add to the deck. Uh, we just can't craft it in the early town. That'll apply Energize. Upgrading our Electric Discharges will, will do Energize. Or if you're going like a Support Wilbur and you have uh, you know the, the normal Energize options of the, the Scrolls of Intellect and, and stuff like that. Uh, that will trigger this a lot, but that you're, you're kind of playing into that, that spark theme, which is why, like I said, either Voltaic Arc or Scholar are both very viable, just because uh, if you go like the Tesla Coil route, both of them will trigger this. Uh, Transcribe, it, it speaks for itself. It's very powerful. You get a free book, you will draw more cards, all good things. Uh, if you have any sort of book you want to duplicate, this is a, is a very strong pickup. All, all, very, all of this is very... Very playable all the way through. Like I said, just the one that you really got to worry about is deciding whether you're going Voltaic Arc or Scholar for just your starting deck. Uh, and then level five, if you got any sort of Energize, plus one, straightforward, and Glass Cannon, also straightforward. Now the big thing about Glass Cannon is this bonus damage done does not affect Spark. It affects the lightning damage you do, but not the Spark damage you do. So keep that in mind if you're ever going to pick Glass Cannon, thinking it's going to upgrade your, your Spark damage, that's, that's not going to apply. Uh, Equipment-wise, uh, nothing really needed in the starting town. He's very straightforward on what you know what's good for Wilbur. Like what looks good for Wilbur is probably good for Wilbur. If you're going the book route, I'd make sure you go for a quill. Uh, if you're going the lightning route, go for some sort of lightning amplification weapon. That's really the only things I'd worry about there. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.